What's good? Welcome back to another edition of Talk That Talk Podcast. I go by the name of Bake, and I got my co-host with me. It's your boy, man. Hey, man, look, gee, look, you tried that. Like that was that, that was a valiant effort. I, I am I am very appreciative of you, my brother, for, for that effort. Like your energy was there. I like I know you, so I know your energy. Like your energy is always pure. So that's what you you bring pure energy. But the delivery, oh my goodness, he couldn't do it. And, and I understand. You feel me? But hey, we tried. Man. We we tried. I'm about yeah. to all kind of stuff right now. But we good. We here. On to another show. We have the results, and we we will announce the winner. Did we find out who's the winner of the Chipotle? Nobody won. <laughs> Who was the closest, man? Nobody was close, if you want the truth. Like, because everybody had at least the Chiefs scoring 20. Everyone had at least 20. Nobody even had, like, you know, a 17-10 game or, like, bro. No, I feel it. Okay, what we'll do is whoever picked the Bucks to win, we'll put a name in a hat, and then we'll let y'all know via IG so we can, you know, give out something. We don't want to be like, since you didn't win, you don't get yeah. it. We ain't so, gonna... no, let me see something real quick. Hold up. I may, I may have an answer for you. Okay. Hold up. Wait, where is this at? So what if we go with the person who picked the Bucks that had the... Damn. Didn't nobody even pick? Only one person hanged close to the Bucks final score. Oh, no, it's cool. It's cool. What we do is, how many people pick the Bucks? So based on this comment list, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So out of those six people, what we'll do is we'll do a random draw and we'll let them know who won so we can make sure somebody get hooked up uh, yeah. with the Chipotle gift card. But we got some crazy stuff to talk about, man. We got to talk about Mahomes' legacy. And we got to talk about, first and foremost, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Quote, unquote, shocked the world. But in my opinion, I told you guys what was going to be the defining factor. And it proved. My man, Pat Mahomes, ran for over 500 yards in the Super Bowl. He had the highest pressure rate in the Super Bowl. And the first time in his career where he didn't throw a touchdown pass came in the Super Bowl. Probably the worst game you can have, you had it in the Super Bowl. It was almost, in my opinion, like the San Francisco 49ers first half, right? But that was how it was the whole game. That man was running for his life. It was like I was watching, what is that dang movie? Uh, The Purge. And Pat Mahomes was trying to stay alive before the, the light came on. You know how you got a certain amount of time that you can do break the crime? Pat Mahomes was in the purge, and damn near he got purged so much. I, I, I felt bad for the boy. I, I felt bad. Pat Mahomes is biracial, but to that day, I saw the white side of Pat Mahomes. That boy was running with deer with headlights. You should have saw the way he was throwing a football. It was like prayers. Lord, please let him catch it. And then the simple fact when the receivers dropped the ball and the balls that hit him right in the face, pause. The balls that they could have caught with their hands went straight and hit him in the face mask. It was like they lost sight of how to play receivers out there. Too many drop balls on big plays, but shout out to the Tampa Bay Bucks defense. I know Tom Brady's going to get the credit. He threw for three tubs. You got to give him some love. But the defense, the defense, Ty Bowles defense mm-hmm. is probably one of the best defensive shows ever. This is probably better than the Baltimore Ravens defense in 2000. Let me hear, let me hear me out. The Baltimore Ravens didn't play against a high prolific offense like the Kansas City Chiefs, where you got a, 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 a quarterback who can sling that thing deep down the field, when you got receivers top end speed and you got a number one tight end in the league, like weapons on weapons on weapons. We all thought that none of those, even Tampa Bay couldn't neutralize the weapons of the Chiefs, but we thought wrong. Not only did they neutralize them, 
they held them from not even scoring a touchdown. They kicked three field goals. Not one, mm-hmm. not two, mm-hmm. but three mm-hmm. field goals. It was it was it was tough. The game was over in the third third quarter. It was over in the third quarter, even though it looked like it could have been close. It was over in the third quarter, and this is what. And before I let you go, this is what gets me every time. Oh, Pat Mahomes needs to get surgery. It's like you're trying to put a damper on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers championship. It's like, oh, you only won because Tampa, uh, because the offensive line, which is true. The two Pro Bowl offense alignment wasn't there. And then one of their offense alignment chose to sit out because of COVID. That's number one. And now, because Pat Mahomes was at 100%, that's the only reason y'all won like y'all did. How do you feel about the Super Bowl results? And what does this say about Tom Brady legacy? Super Bowl went as we predicted. Uh, we both took the Bucks. Um, we just thought it would be a better game. I did. And we, you know, I had it. 33-27, I think you had it 31-24, I think as you switched from 28-21. Yeah. So, you know, we both had one possession game. We think it was going to be a – defense was going – you know, like the game wasn't going to get crazy. Somebody on defense had to do something. So we both thought that's what was going to happen. But we did make the Bucks, And um, that even – like the day defense – so when I look at this, I say, all right, when the Rams lost to the Patriots, right? The greatest show on turf at the time, Bill Belichick neutralized it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But still, the Rams, that game came down to one possession. Tom Brady had to get a field goal. Yeah. Um, the Raiders against the Bucks, Rich getting MVP season. They defense played well. I mean, they had about four picks, a couple of pick sixes. But if you end up watching that game, because I have before, the Raiders had a chance to, to make that a lot interesting. Like, you know, they, they crawled their way back in it, damn near. Um, and so the defensive performance that the Bucks put on, to me, I say is right next to the Giants' defensive performance against the Patriots uh, on, the, on the super catch that year. Just because how high profile those offenses are and what those defenses did to make those offenses look – regular mm-hmm. and so you got to give it up to Todd Bowles man that defensive scheme and game plan work to perfection right. not having them two left not having them tackles destroyed them and didn't make it no better that Pat Mahomes that turf toe so I mean yeah he ended up getting surgery but all I felt was if he would have been healthy he probably ran for 600 yards right <laughs> no 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 for real man it it was at points where when you hiked the ball, they was already back there. It was there. It was like Pop Warner football. You ever see Pop Warner football? I, I, pop, 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 pop. Man. You know I'm coached. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I mean. When you, yeah. when you hike the ball and you already right. got three people in front of you, it's it's mind-blowing. I don't care who you are. You struggle. And, and Pat Mahal struggled, man. He, he struggled. And now we got Tom Brady. The the, the go. Listen, it's, it, there's no other conversation. It's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that now. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. He, he's the – he's the – okay, put it this way. The greatest quarterback of all time. Not the greatest player. Not the most dominant. I get what you're saying because he got seven rings. So, based off the rings, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. No, because his stats, too, back it up. He's like right now, he's second in passing touchdowns in his career. He's third in passing yards in his career. Uh, he has the highest winning percentage in his career. Like, like the other numbers also back it up. Just because, just besides the seven rings, you feel me? Like, I think, and one thing I had to, because I never disliked Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I just hated the Patriots. And it's because of the tuck rule. It, that's just one of those things that just stick with me. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it, it's like his leadership, what he brings to your team. Okay. That, I mean that you that that when I'm playing and I got Tom Brady at quarterback, I'm okay. I know we're going to compete. Yeah. That's what that is. So I feel like you he becomes the greatest because you when you combine all three, it's hard to say that 
another quarterback, I guess, besides Joe Montana, gave you that. Yeah. You can look at it. Just look at the whole body of work. And Montana didn't even have the statistical numbers because the 80s era wasn't what it is now. But you know when you step on the field with Tom Brady, you're going to win. He got stats to back it up. And then he got the most important thing, the Lombardis. Yeah, he do. That's why I got to put him as the greatest quarterback. He's, he's the greatest quarterback stat-wise. Um, there are things that other quarterbacks do very, very well. But Tom Brady's been fortunate to have some amazing defense to help him win these Super Bowls. I don't like to just give the credit to one man. It, it was a team effort, and he just had the best benefits of the team efforts winning. But let's let's call a spade a spade. What they did to, to Kansas City is they made Mahomes look regular. Mahomes really didn't have a lot of time, but it, when he did have time, he was trying to always get the big play. It was always trying to go for the big play, big play, big play. And it's like a stubborn kid, right? It's a stubborn kid. When you tell that kid, don't you touch that damn stove, it's hot. And they're like, mm, yeah, yeah, I'm still going to do what I want to do because I know it's not that hot. It ain't that hot. And so he kept trying to touch the stove. And every time he touched the stove, it got hot. It got real hot for him. Instead of taking what the defense gave him, taking the underneath, they had one play, and I wonder why they went away from it. It was a it was a doubles where one man takes two uh, defenders and the other man cuts right underneath. It was working to perfection, and they would get lots and lots of yards, and they stopped doing it. Everything tried to kept being deep, try to be deep, and that, and that got them in trouble because he was trying to go for the big plays. And, and what did my man Devin White say? Hey, we wanted him to – to make a methodical drive. We wanted him to dip and dump. We wasn't giving up nothing deep. And that show, and, and this is one of those things that you got to show that he got a chink in his armor because again, it's habits. It's habits. When you losing in your mind, in your, in his head, Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs said, it ain't never over because we can always go for 21. Even when we went to the Super Bowl gathering, people were like, oh, that's not over. We've already seen this before. Pat Mahomes been down by multiple points. 14 points ain't nothing. But no, I knew that game was different by the way he was playing, by the way they was playing, and what they chose to do. When you become one-dimensional, when you become one-dimensional, you always lose the game. I don't care what nobody said. You got to be able to run a football. They averaged seven yards a pop on the ground and they ran away from it. That's how you keep the defense balanced. If they're so busy worried about the coverages, little screens, little handoffs, little uh, RPOs, give it to them, let them go. And they chose to continue to run away. They never stuck with it. They get a 20 yard bus and then they try to run, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. It was so odd to me. They get 10 yards here, 15 yards here. Then they want to throw the ball six times and they punt. I, listen, it was because I think you touched on it at some point during the regular season about the Chiefs doing this. And, um, you know, I don't like to bring this up a lot, but the only other loss they had this year was to the Raiders. And the first game they came out, smacked us in the mouth. But in the second half, they never ran the ball. Like they had to leave, but never ran the ball. So our defense was just allowed to play coverage and we made a few plays. And obviously their defense is regular. So they're going to give up stuff anyway. And then the second time they played the Raiders, the Raiders did exactly what Tampa Bay did. They made the drives long, very methodical to where it was, it was, 10, 11 play drives, because that's not the Chiefs' way. The Chiefs' way is five, six play drives, big chunks down the field. Tampa Bay defense was just able to uh, get pressure at times and, and get them off the field on critical third downs, because I think the Chiefs went like two for 12 on third down. So you said what? It was bad. Yeah, and so they was just able to execute on third downs. And the Chiefs, for some odd reason, drafted Clyde Edwards-Hilaire to be the running back for them not to run the ball, which makes zero sense to me. Like the, that first game, the first game was easy as the Houston Texans. I think they rushed for like close to two something, threw for a little bit over two something, and people were like, oh my God, the Chiefs running the ball? You're not going to be able to stop them. 
You feel me? It's like they want to make sure that Pat Mahomes is still throwing for 5,000 yards, that Kelsey is getting all the receptions. That You know, it's like they have to do that when that's supposed to be a part of it because you can run the ball. Right. And, you know, the Bucks just exposed that. And, you know, Pat Mahomes right now is looking very Russell Wilson, well, Russell Wilson-esque. Mm. First year, right? They lose to the conference finals. Mm-hmm. Second year, win, win, win the Super Bowl. Mm. Third year, lose to Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Mm. That's crazy. Russell Wilson ain't been back since. Mm. I'm not going to go that far. But I, all I'm saying is when your window is there, you got to you got to capitalize on that window because we got to think about it. Tom Brady went 10 years in between winning rings three and four. He made it to the Super Bowl twice, but he went 10 years in winning. You feel me? So it's like Will the, how will the Chiefs turn this over? The only, you know, he got a new contract. So, you know, NFL money ain't the same NFL money because of, of COVID. Right. So that means the plans you possibly had, like, oh, he took a quote-unquote team-friendly deal, ain't going to be as team-friendly given the circumstances. So right. now you're going to have to make some moves. Luckily for them right now, um, all their pending free agents, and we'll get into all that, you know, as we get – close but all their pending free agents are people they can lose and not and not be like oh my god like you know like so right. they'd be okay but we I don't know how long it'll last but to me Pat Mahomes legacy I gotta see how he bounced back mm. gotta just see how he bounced back and what it's gonna look like two or three years down the line uh, but he can't he can't surpass Brady I'm telling people that now the only way really he can surpass them is he as he beat them in the Super or he win more rings. He ain't winning eight. I know, but I'm just saying he, he either he win more rings or he beat him in the Super Bowl to be like, this is my stuff. This was this was the game, man, and it did not live up to the hype. And I feel like when it comes to Pat Mahomes' legacy as of right now, it's tarnished as of right now. Like, and, and, and remember when you say tarnish, it's not that it's tarnished because we like, oh, he's a bad player. No, 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 no. I just mean like it's, it's just... tarnished because it got a chink in his armor now because you lost to the guy who they said you was better than. And even though you can't do nothing about that when you ain't got no offensive line, you can't. But at the end of the day, all you can do is go with what you got. You know what I'm saying? And the simple fact of the matter is, is right now you are 0-1 against Brady in the Super Bowl. You're 0-2 against Brady in the playoffs. Right. 0-2 against Brady in the playoffs. And so at the end of the day, it's not a good look when it comes to you. Because this was this was a big, and I said it last week, this was a bigger game for Pat Mahomes than it was for Brady. Brady pretty much solidified his career already when he's won those championships. He's won six. He's got the same amount as a freaking NFL franchise. He's helped the New England Patriots win six. And now he has more Super Bowl rings than any NFL franchise ever. So he's already solidified. But this was more about Patrick Mahomes saying, I'm the new sheriff in town. I'm that guy. You know how you got that new gunslinger and you got that old gunslinger who 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 who, who ain't as fast as it used to be, who, who shot us a little bit off here and there. And who's not guns blazing like this young pup, but he always find out to catch the guy. He always get the job done. And I think what he did to Mahomes is said, hey, young blood, you great. Mm-hmm. Just not there yet. Mm. I'm still the GOAT. And you can maybe get there, but just know you lost to me. You lost me. And I know if you see the Super Bowl parties and you see Tom Brady, Tom Brady is on cloud 20. Not on cloud nine. He's on cloud 20 because he's like, man, everybody said I was old. Everybody counted us out. But it's crazy that the last team they lost to was the Kansas City Chiefs. That last loss made them go 8-0. and oh. They never lost again. And that defense tightened up. The defense always had at least a couple of takeaways and pressures. And they did it to Breeze. 
and they did it to Rodgers, and they did it to Mahomes. So shout out to my man, Todd Bowles. That man needs a head coaching job. He needs another opportunity. But I don't think he would be able to do the same thing because people always think it's always the coach. Not always. It's the person. Got to have a talent. Got to have a talent. He had the personnel to do it. And I, I think he probably will stay there to try to repeat because they already talking about we're going to do it again. Okay, they, hey, listen. We're going to get there. They said we're going to do it again. Much respect again, man, because I posted it on uh, my social feed. Much respect to uh, Bruce Arians. The diversity he has on his coaching staff. Facts. The diversity that the, the Buccaneers have is what the NFL needs to be shooting for. For him to have four African-American men on his coaching staff in dominant areas is, is big. For him to have the diversity that he has of having a female on his staff is big. And for him to have other African-Americans on his staff also doing some of the the, the, the underneath work that everybody don't get to talk about. I respect the hell out of that. And, you know, I just feel like he's really for the culture and mm -hmm. you got to respect the man that wants to, that that's just not out there talking about it. He's actually being about it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? All these other NFL franchises kind of talk about it and yeah, we're going to do this and yeah, we're going to do that, but not everybody being about it. And I just respect the, the Buccaneers organization because, you know, even though he's the guy that's doing the how you know, they have to still approve and hire. And uh, shout out to the Buccaneers organization and big shout out to Bruce Arians. And um, I can't say they're going to two-peat because obviously I want my team to win. And I know you ain't trying to hear them trying to two-peat because they're here division. No, no, no. They in our division. <laughs> uh, I just know we're about to be in the rebuilding uh, phase. And I, I, I know what's coming for us. For these next three, four years, I feel like we've mess, missed our window and we're going to have to rebuild and we're going to have to regroup and we're going to have to figure out what direction we want to go. I'm still not fond of our uh, head coaching job. I thought we was going to get my man, um, the offensive coordinator for the Chiefs, but nobody's giving that man no love. And I probably they probably not going to give him no love right now because of how they looked in the Super Bowl. Uh, and so, and then again, you had the Andy Reid issue with his son, uh, uh, part of that uh, car accident, and they said it could have been some um, alcohol involved, possibly uh, that left a young child pretty much on 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 the on the battle for her life. So it was a lot of morale, a lot of morale going in. It just didn't favor the Chiefs, man. It really didn't. Some calls that didn't go their way. I'm not gonna say there was a deciding factor of the game. Because even with those calls, you still got the second half. They didn't do nothing in the second half. When I saw them kick that field goal, when they came out in the second half, I knew they wasn't winning that game. I was like, yeah, this game is over because they usually score. They usually, that's when you know they're back in it. I never saw Pat Mahomes get like, let's go, we here. You never saw it. And we, and we showed, it showed. They got routed. And then the last play of the game, Devin White, when he got that interception, that's, pride right there that's saying i don't care what y'all talking about y'all not scoring today you're not throwing a touchdown <laughs> mr mahomes and he made it personal because like the game was over he took that ball and was like yeah no. you, you no. thought you that one and they all came out there like this is my stuff yeah, no, no. I, I, that's what i'm saying that's that's the kind of dogs you need on your team to go win the super bowl right that Oh, you think you about to just get a test? Nah. Oh, this is gonna stay thirty-one nine. This going we want history to show that the Kansas City superpowers didn't come to play. We Thanos snapped that ass. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I would like to see them play again. I don't know if it's gonna be in the Super Bowl, but I want to see them play full health. I want to have because again, you only know, way it's gonna be is in the Super Bowl in three years, and who knows if Tom Brady gonna be there. Yeah. So we, 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 we'll see. But anyway, before we get up out of here, we got to talk about the Hall of Fame class. This by far may be one of the best Hall of Fame classes in a while. In a while with people like Charles Woodson, people like uh, my man Lynch, uh, Peyton Manny, you know what I'm saying? Like some, some big time names all going in at the same time. This is huge. How do you feel about the Hall of Fame class this year? I love it, man. I love it. Uh, shout out to Peyton Manning. We already know the sheriff was the first ballot Hall of Famer. 
Facts. Calvin Johnson thing shocked the hell out of me. Mm. It just shocked me. I, I mean, just because his numbers say he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, but, you know, he didn't really stick around for too much longer. So it wasn't his fault, though. Nah, nah. I mean, I would have left the, the Lions, too. He had to do what Barry did. It was like, yo, y'all don't want to trade me? Well, I'm going to retire then. Like, I, I'm yeah. done. So John Lynch, because he's been on the ballot for a little bit, shout out to him. Um, Alan Fanica, uh, a guard that played for the Steelers, you know, dominant during his era. I have a problem with Drew Pearson. Mm. Um, just because, again, you know, I'm a, I'm a hometown guy. Uh, Cliff Branch of the Raiders has better numbers than Drew Pearson and has won more Super Bowls than Drew Pearson. And some odd reason, he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. So I have a problem with Drew Pearson. Nothing against him personally, but if a guy has better numbers and has one more, uh, I feel like he deserves a better, he deserves a nod. So that's that. And then the last two people, uh, some guy, a guy named Bill Nunn, who's a contributor. I don't know what he contributed to, but shout out to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the last two people was, you know, me being a Raider fan, Coach Tom Flores, first Hispanic American quarterback, first Hispanic head coach that has won two Super Bowls, and he's from out this way, uh, out in the Sanger area. Mm. So I'm real happy for Tom Flores. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Coach Flores in uh, 2015 mm. at a coaching clinic in the Bay Area. Mm. Um, got a chance to shake his hand, talk a little 1983 Super Bowl, uh, read his playbook from mm. that. Um, only thing I'm mad, I didn't get a chance to take a picture because they were trying to get us up out of there. So I'm kind of sad about that. Mm. And then my guy, my favorite NFL player of all time, of all time, Charles Woodson. I'm just happy for him, man. You know, he deserved to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I hope he goes into the Hall of Famer as a Raider and not a Packer. Um, but, you know, he won his Super Bowl with the Packer. He won his defensive player of the year with the Packers. So it'll be nothing but respect of whatever decision he makes. But I'm just, like I said, man, I'm just happy. Happy C. Wood, man, got in because that's my guy. He went to Michigan and then from Michigan. He's, he's the reason I'm a Michigan football fan. And he plays a part in the reason why, you know, I've always been, I've been a diehard Raider fan. Mm. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. It's dope class. It's, it's, it's a dope class by far. Um, well deserving. Whoever got in, hey, like I said, I don't make the rules. Yeah. I don't vote. Um, but shout out to those people because they played and and they put their life in the, on the line and they put their heart in the game and they got rewarded. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to those folks, uh, especially Charles Woodson. You know, being a DB, seeing a DB get into the the Hall of Fame and what he did for DBs around the world. He was the second biggest like popular DB besides Deion Sanders. Like Charles Wilson was the guy. Everybody knew who Charles Wilson was. Um, but you never know where he's going to go. Is he going to go as a Packer? Is he going to go as a as an Oakland Raider? Or he, and maybe they do a little bit of both. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, only he knows. But shout out to them. Well-deserving. Um, and shout out to the season, man. It was, it's been a great, great NFL season. I feel like, you know, the best team won on Super Bowl Sunday. I wish the game was a little bit more exciting. I wish it was more of a nail biter because you, you, it's like the, it never fails. A lot of times these big games never live up to the hype. They always seem to be one sided or one dimensional for one team. And you'd be like, man, this is boring. You know what I mean? And then the games, you'd be like, man, this is about to be a boring game. You'd be like, yo, this game is lit. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of the, kind of the uh, thought that we got, like at, at the little event we went, man, people was already eating, uh, worried about the food and eating besides the game because they thought it was over in the third quarter. It was bad. It was bad. They, they did a pre-celebration for Tom Brady uh, in, the, in the first half. You know what I mean? And shout out to the weekend as well. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, before, I, before, I, before we let you wrap it up, it's funny joke. It ain't funny, but it's funny. They said, it was like, hey, man, how could the weekend be a sponsor for Pepsi, but he talking about Coke? <laughs>
I started cracking up, man. That's a great joke. I started cracking up, dog. I was like, yo, that is as funny as to go get right there, man. And I, I, I said, that was a good one. That 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 was a good one, man. Uh, but yeah, man, anything you want to say before we get up out of here? No, man, just to echo what you said, man, uh, the fact that we got through a full NFL season, no, no shutdown, no postponements, few cancellations and rescheduling, um, the NFL pulled it off, man. And um, we, you had your doubts. For the most part, you know, the world had their doubts. I was a little bit optimistic. I just felt like they followed my plan. It could have still worked out, too. But um, shout out to the NFL for completing the season. Now we're about to see. Well, baseball has completed the season. Um, kind of doing it the regular way. Hockey completed the season. that it was in a bubble. So now we're about to see how all this stuff works out without a bubble. Baseball did without a bubble. Football was able to figure out a bubble. Basketball is trending in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to see how hockey does with their situation. So, you know, I'm just glad sports is here. Uh, they're starting to open up basketball stadiums. Uh, I guess the New York is allowing um, 10% capacity in their arenas. Um, uh, I know I got people who stay in SoCal who are saying the, the numbers in hospitals are going down. So uh, we're not about to beat COVID because it's not a, a real opponent. But I feel like, you know, society is starting to do better. Yeah. And I'm happy about that uh, outside of the Gorilla Glue situation. But we're going to leave that alone. Yeah, let's leave that alone. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, man, be thankful. Uh, we appreciate it of everything y'all do. We're going to announce the winners. We're going to let y'all know who won uh, the Chipotle, and we're going to uh, get your information so we can send that to you uh, and show you some love for uh, showing us some love. Um, other than that, man, we on to the next. We'll be doing some free agency. We'll be doing some drafts. As you know, that's going to be coming up. We'll be talking about teams rebuilding, who's looking like the the, the the favorites for next year, all that good stuff, and then rookies that's maybe coming in the league and, and making a change. You never know who's going to make an impact on the game. Um, but other than that, man, always remember to stay blessed, stay safe, and to talk that talk. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Peace.